But my brother, Geoffrey, who was older than me, only ever wanted to be an actor. And he went to the Central School and I, he came back and I kind of caught it from him. And I thought, I, oh, I'd like a go at that. And I did, and I've never regretted it. And I've been incredibly lucky. How much would you trust the late Queen Elizabeth's opinion? Two British actresses, both born in 1934, in the month of December, only 19 days apart, and both having debuted with Shakespeare plays, had the honor of damehood conferred upon them by Queen Elizabeth II, Dame Judi Dench and Dame Maggie Smith. Let's go back and take a brief look at the lives and careers of these two showbiz legends in a video essay I'm calling The Dames. There is nothing like a dame. Margaret Natalie Smith moved to Oxford when she was four years old. She attended the Oxford High School until she was 16, after which she left to study acting at the Oxford Playhouse. Her acting debut was at the age of 17 in 1952, when she played Viola in Shakespeare's Twelfth Night at the Oxford Playhouse. She continued to act in Oxford Playhouse's productions such as Cinderella, Rookery Nook, Cakes and Ale, and The Government Inspector until 1954. How did you begin in the theatre? Did you act at school? The very first definite step was, was when I was still at school. They had a frightfully good thing that when you'd finished, you know, general school certificate, you usually had about two weeks at the end of term, which was kind of dead time. And I immediately went to the Oxford Playhouse. Meanwhile, Judith Olivia Dench attended the Mount School and also had frequent contact with theatre in her early life, as her father was a general practitioner for the York Theatre Royal while her mother was a wardrobe mistress. On a non-professional basis, she was working in York Theatre Productions from 1951 to 1957. The Central School of Speech and Drama, based in London, accepted her, and here she was awarded four acting prizes, including the gold medal as Outstanding Student. Her professional debut as an actress was at the age of 22 in 1957 with the Old Vic Company as Ophelia in Hamlet. She would remain with the company for four seasons, from 1957 to 1961. I mean, the moment somebody says, uh, oh, that's rotten casting for a part. She can't play Lady Bracknell. That somehow is the one thing I want. Maggie made her Broadway debut in 1956 with the play New Faces 56. This was the same year she first appeared in film, in a small role of a party guest in the British drama Child in the House. The next year, in 1957, she would prove her musical prowess as well, starring opposite Kenneth Williams in the musical comedy Share My Lettuce. In 1958, Judy Dench found herself sharing her dressing room at the Old Vic with another girl of the same age, Maggie Smith. The two were in The Double Dealer, and in Maggie's own words, I remember laughter more than anything in the world. Judy's the most tremendous friend. She's been a huge support and hugely loyal. You'd think that two young actresses of the same age entering the acting scene together might be a bit competitive and find it difficult to get along. But talent recognizes talent, and the two became instant friends. Maggie's first credited role on screen was also in 1958 as Bridget Howard in the film Nowhere to Go, a role that would get her her first British Academy Film Award nomination. I thought he was trying to pick me up. I told him we could go to hell, but I can't remember my exact words. Meanwhile, Judy was making waves in the world of theater. She joined the Shakespeare Company in 1961 with the role of Anya in The Cherry Orchard. Maggie won her first Best Actress Evening Standard Award in 1962 for her roles in Peter Schaefer's play The Private Ear and The Public Eye. For the next eight years, she would be an active part of Laurence Olivier's National Theatre Company, where a healthy rivalry with Olivier would incite outstanding performances in plays such as Othello, The Master Builder, The Recruiting Officer, and Much Ado About Nothing. Ooh, what a wonderfully rich aroma. New Maxwell House classic. I love the classics. And I love this rich taste. How can one describe such classic richness? Shakespeare would have put it so well. 
Is there a sonnet to richness to stir the emotions and stimulate the senses? This richness so deep, this richness so... Why use 50 words when two say it all? 1964 marked two debuts for Dench. She made her television debut as Valentine Wanup in Theater 625's adaptation of Parade's End and her film debut in The Third Secret as Miss Humphreys. Oh, I'm terribly sorry. I didn't mean... It's just that we've practically forgotten that you are an American, Mr. Stedman. You've almost become a fixture. That's terribly hospitable of you. Then, in 1965, she had a small role in the Sherlock Holmes thriller A Study in Terror, after which she starred in Four in the Morning, for which she won the 1966 BAFTA Award for Most Promising Newcomer to Leading Film Roles. In 1967, Maggie married fellow actor Robert Stevens. Their marriage lasted eight years, and they had two sons, Chris Larkin in 1967 and Toby Stevens in 1969. Both of them have gone on to have successful acting careers of their own. Oh, you're an actor because your parents are actors. You kind of go, well, no, I'm, I'm my own person. I totally have my own career, and it doesn't, it doesn't. I, I don't see why I have to, to sort of qualify that all the time. And I, and my mother's the same. You know, she's sort of like, oh God, you have to you'd be stuck with that all the time. But at the same time, I'm immensely proud of her, and I adore her, and I adore her work. Also in 1969, Maggie won her first Oscar for Best Actress for her performance in the title role of the prime of Miss Jean Brody. I am a teacher. I am a teacher first, last, always. Do you imagine that for one instant I will let that be taken from me without a fight? The role also won Maggie her first BAFTA Film Award for Best Actress. Critics loved her performance. It was described as one of those technically stunning, emotionally distant performances that the British are so damn good at. Judy's first recognition by the Queen was in 1970, when she was made Officer of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, awarded to people who gain national acknowledgement due to their excellent work in their chosen profession. Little did she know this was simply a prequel to her higher title of damehood. But first, Judy made some leaps in her personal life, tying the knot with Michael Williams in 1971, a marriage that would last 30 years. She went on to have a daughter with him, Finty Williams, in 1972, they worked together often, most notably in the BBC sitcom A Fine Romance from 1981 to 1984. Just because I'm plain or homely or downright ugly doesn't mean to say I have to jump at the first thing in trousers. This is a load to me. Well, that's what I mean. Substitute the word skirts for trousers, and that's what I mean. Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, in 1972, Smith received her third Oscar nomination for Best Actress for her role as Augusta Bertram in Travels with My Aunt. Oh, acting needs no excuse. I was not excusing myself, I was explaining. In that profession, age is a great handicap. Smith and Stevens divorced on April 6, 1975. And on June 23, 1975, Smith married playwright Beverly Cross. This marriage lasted until death parted them, when Cross passed away on March 20, 1998. Maggie got her second Oscar for her role in Neil Simon's California Suite in 1978, where she ironically played an Oscar loser. Even if Diana Barry couldn't win, Maggie Smith certainly could. I'm very, very honored and very grateful. I would like to thank Neil Simon. I would like to thank Kirby Ross, and I would very much like Michael Caine to be here because, believe you me, he was the most supporting actor ever in the world and it really should go right down the middle. <laughs> this was also the film that won her her first Golden Globe Award. The 1985 British romance film A Room with a View was the first time the two appeared on screen together, with Maggie Smith playing the spinster Charlotte Bartlett and Judi Dench playing the romance author Eleanor Lavish. The film received universal critical acclaim and was a box office success. It was nominated for eight Academy Awards, out of which it won three, Best Adapted Screenplay, Best Art Direction, and Best Costume Design. In 1999, the British Film Institute ranked it 73rd on its list of top 100 British films. No, Miss Bartlett, you will not look into your Baedeker. Two lone females in an unknown city. Now that's what I call an adventure. We will simply drift. 
In 1988, Judy Dench was honored with Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire and could now be called Dame Judith Olivia Dench. Maggie joined her only two years later when she was made a dame in 1990. You phoned me when it happened to me and you said it doesn't make any difference, you can still swear. <laughs> Yes. Do you remember? You can swear more. Actually. You can swear more, yeah. <clears throat> Just try and do it privately. The Queen had considered both of their contributions to the artistic worlds of film, theater, and television great enough to warrant the honor of damehood, and both would now add dame before their names. Judy made history when she was cast as James Bond's boss M in the 1995 film Goldeneye, making her the first woman to ever be cast in the role. You don't like me, Bond. You don't like my methods. You think I'm an accountant, a bean counter, more interested in my numbers and your instincts. The thought had occurred to me. Good, because I think you're a sexist, misogynist dinosaur. She played M throughout Pierce Brosnan's run as Bond and continued with Daniel Craig's Bond for three movies until her character's death in Skyfall. I suppose it's too late to make a run for it becoming the longest serving cast member in the history of the films. 1997 was a good year for Dame Judi Dench. Her grandson was born and she was nominated for an Academy Award for her role in Mrs. Brown, along with winning a Golden Globe, with just eight minutes of screen time for her role in Shakespeare in Love in 1998, arriving on the scene as Queen Elizabeth in a dress that took hours to put on. Judy commanded the attention and respect of everyone who heard her, with her iconic Have a care with my name, you will wear it out. Tea with Mussolini is a 1999 Italian comedy drama war film that brought together Maggie Smith as Lady Hester Random, the widow of a former British ambassador, and Judy Dench in the role of aspiring artist Arabella. This role won Maggie a British Academy Film Award for Best Supporting Actress. Old friends can make you feel young, something that the crew of this film witnessed when the two were giggling together between scenes. According to Maggie, we drank Prosecco and behaved very badly. In 2001, Smith took on the role that she may be best known for, Professor McGonagall in the first Harry Potter movie, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, a role that she would continue to play for the next seven films. How many films take 10 years? That's, that's what stands out, that you're, you're with this character for longer than you are with any, any character ever. So that's, that's the legacy. The same year marked a huge blow for Judy. Her husband of the past 30 years, Michael Williams, lost his battle with lung cancer and passed away. She wouldn't recover from his death for a long time and would always continue to feel his presence everywhere. And what was the foundation of the relationship? Because I'm always curious about successful Marriages. I can tell, Louis. Sense of humour, mm. probably mostly. Michael used to laugh, and, and when he laughed, he used to cry. I think mostly that. Interested in the same things, of course, but, I mean, what is it? It's I... impossible to tell. Ladies and Lavender, a 2004 British drama, gave the two dames a chance to work closely together in the role of sisters, Janet and Ursula Whittington who find a young Polish violinist washed up on the beach below their house and nurse him back to health. The two had already been working together on a play in London's West End when they were approached for Ladies in Lavender. Their chemistry as old friends really makes them fit with each other and makes their roles as sisters believable. About their performance, a critic wrote, their acting is so natural it could be breathing. We worked at the Vic in 1958 and 59. Uh, in the theatre. Then we were in Room with a View together. Then we were in Tea with Mussolini. Then we've just done a run of The Breath of Life, David Hare's play, uh, at the Haymarket, which finished early this year. And now this. Old friends. It's good. It's very nice to be together. In 2010, unexpectedly, Judy entered her first romantic relationship after her husband's death with David Mills, a conservationist. The relationship took even her by surprise. She had been heartbroken by her husband's death and had never considered the possibility of falling in love again. Nevertheless, the two are still together, although they claim they have no plans of marriage. Where's the clover? Is in the clover? Yes, ma'am. Oh, 
country, dear. Dairy Crest Clover tastes like butter spreads even when cold. Maggie appeared as Violet Crawley in the first season of the period drama Downton Abbey in 2010 and continued to play the role till 2015, spanning over six seasons and winning herself three Primetime Emmy Awards, four Screen Actors Guild Awards, and a Golden Globe. She also played Violet Crawley in the 2019 and 2022 film adaptations of the series. Violet Crawley will remain iconic. Her sassiness always hit the mark, and she remained sophisticated while also being witty. As she would say, Sybil vulgarity is no substitute for wit. The 2011 British comedy drama, The Best Exotic Marigold Hotel, brought the two dames on screen together once more. Judy Dench played Evelyn Greenslade, a recently widowed housewife, while Maggie Smith played Muriel Donnelly, a former housekeeper. The film was a commercial success that topped the box office after its second weekend of release. In 2015, a sequel called The Second Best Exotic Marigold Hotel was released, again bringing the two on screen together. I don't know why I tell you anything. Because I'm older and wiser. 19 days older. That's the entire lifespan of a wasp. Unfortunately, due to her age, Judy has been dealing with various health issues. In 2012, she opened up about her macular degeneration, a disease that made one of her eyes feel wet and the other dry. She has received various injections into her eye for treatment. These problems obviously did not affect her acting prowess, as she received an Oscar nomination for her performance in the 2013 film Philomena, proving that her age and health were not a hindrance to her skill. You should be nice to the people on the way up, because you might meet them again on the way down. Now you of all people, should understand that. Maggie was awarded the title of Companion of Honor by the Queen in 2014, an honor given to those who make major contributions to art, science, medicine, or government, lasting over a considerable period of time. Precision is the key to a long life. Precision and wine. The 2018 documentary Tea with the Dames is perhaps the most candid look at their long friendship. Judy and Maggie, along with Eileen Atkins and Joan Plowright, all of whom are dames, talk about their careers in films and theater and converse with each other as old friends are bound to do, happily and with extreme honesty. This meetup is not just for the cameras. The four claim to meet annually to talk and spend time together. We're going to work forever if we're asked. But yeah. you're always asked first, if I may say so. <laughs> I'm turning on you now. <laughs> It's all coming out now. As of 2022, at the age of 87, neither has expressed any wish to retire. Judy played the role of Granny in the 2021 film Belfast, while Maggie reprised the role of Violet Crawley in the 2022 Downton Abbey, A New Era. Smith has won two Oscars, five BAFTAs, four Emmys, and a Tony Award. Dench has won an Oscar, a Tony Award, and four television BAFTA awards. 59 years ago, I was sent up for a film. At the end of the audition, he said, thank you very much. Don't hold out any hopes um, for a film career because you have everything wrong with your face. Their legacies as actors are impressive. It has become impossible to think of anyone other than Dame Maggie Smith in the beloved role of Professor McGonagall or to think of any other woman who could have played James Bond's M, as well as Dame Judi Dench. Their lifelong friendship in the cutthroat world of show business is a testament to their warm personalities, and their devotion to the craft of acting will live on for generations as new fans find their many iconic roles from their long careers. And their gift to the profession will live on through the countless younger actors and filmmakers that they influenced along the way. As they say, there's nothing like a dame. I, I can't tell you how honoured I am to be your friend, Judy. I really am. You, you've done so much for so many people, and I'm sure everybody feels the same about your friendship. <laughs>